takes the snap, runs to his right, going to keep it and run with it, gets a blocker in front of him, dives over a man at the 20-yard line, and he heads out of bounds. He's unbelievable. I mean, it's split second. It's It really is. Just trying to make a, a play for our team, you know, given the situation there. Never doubt. You know, that's just how we play, man. You got to take it one play at a time and, you know, execute that play. Um, and we, when we do that, we know it's hard to beat them. Josh looks to throw, looks in the end zone, fires a strike into the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. It is Dawson Knox, two yards deep in the touch in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. You got a you know, resilient group of guys, resilient men and women in that locker room that have worked extremely hard on the offseason, this year, this week. And now we get a chance to enjoy the bye on the win. Those two plays are so stupid. Mm -hmm. I've watched them like 15 times today, and they're still so unbelievably impressive. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Point After on a Victory Monday that surely tastes a lot sweeter for Bills fans. I'm Matt Bovey, joined by the voice of the Bills, John Murphy, and Joe Biscalia from The Athletic. The Bills, now the best team in the AFC, 5-1 and one after Sunday's 24-20 win over the Kansas City Chiefs. Murph, once again, there was a lot of hype around this matchup, and I think it lived up to it. Yeah, it was too much hype, wasn't there? I mean, <laughs> it was driving me crazy by the time we got to the game, but they did it again. They put on a great show. The two best teams in the league, I think, for certain. Uh, they seem they know each other so well. They do battle in a really uh, a competitive, clean way. I mean, this isn't a grudge match. There's mutual respect from these two teams because they're so good. I mean, they're, they're, I saw something uh, with Travis Kelsey saying to Josh Allen, love playing against you. I think they do love playing against each other because they're both so good. And the, the Chiefs, you can't sell them short. They are explosive and dynamic, and they're really good, and the Bills got the better of them yesterday. Nothing from yesterday's game convinces me that these aren't the best two teams in the NFL. And I know the Eagles are right there, but I would say those three teams, they're kind of on their own tier. At least that's what it seems like after six weeks into the season. Joe, we knew whatever happened yesterday. The Bills are one of the best teams in the league. They're a contender. But is there anything we learned about them yesterday that we didn't know before? Well, I was way more impressed with that victory over the Chiefs than I was the regular season victory uh, last year oh. in Kansas City because even though that one was a, of the blowout variety, they were going against a Chiefs team that was going through some stuff last year. Mm -hmm. They were 2-2 two and two at, the, at the time of that game. Uh, they were facing tons of injuries. They were facing new defensive schemes that they hadn't really seen a ton of before, and they had to work through through that so it wasn't really comparable I think in this game they got the Chiefs at their absolute best uh, at four and one it was a different team because they didn't have Tyreek Hill of course yeah but by all means when they went through it was kind of like a, a business-like uh, mm -hmm. situation they they can sit there and say last year's regular season win over the Chiefs wasn't an emotional one but you could tell there was like an emotional lift to that one and then an, an emotional downturn after that because in the eight games after that they went three and five and uh, yeah. they really had to rescue their season but uh, that's why this one was just so incredibly smooth impressive they beat the second best team in the NFL and and uh, it was very impressive for them moving forward in the first best team you're saying is the Bills right yeah. Huh. It's crazy. I know Bills fans will never get sick of hearing that. And one of the reasons why they're the best team in the NFL, at least what we all think, is because of their quarterback. Every week, Josh Allen does something that is just more impressive than the week before. Joe, what did we see from 17 yesterday? Well, uh, the first drive was great. Uh, yeah. And it really started off well. But then the, the word that I wrote down in my notebook during the first drive before the turnover was inevitable. That's what it kind of felt like. Uh, but after after that they went through some stuff throughout the rest of the first half once they got to that third and 13 uh, from their own end zone at the one yard line that's where i think think everything kind of switched up to that point allen in the passing offense was eight of 18 for under 100 yards from that point forward from that throw forward josh allen was 19 of 22 for 248 yards and three touchdowns above average I would say yeah um, they uh, he was just on a different level in the second half uh, that throw to the end zone at the end of the game was just stupid good like you said at the beginning of the show when you look at some of the different angles how he had to feed it over two different defenders that were trying to jump up uh, on different levels one at the line of scrimmage the other and in the intermediate area and then feeding into a, a, a very low separation area in the corner of the end zone 
just a ridiculous dart of a throw by Josh Allen. And yeah, I mean, he continues to impress you, even though you shouldn't really get impressed because <laughs> we, we know what he is at this point. Yeah, it looks like he's the MVP of the league. I love when we can use stupid as an adjective. <laughs> Murph, I think the thing that's maybe so impressive about Allen, though, is like Joe said, it didn't start perfect, but he was still able to find a way to play perfect or at least close to it in the second half. Yeah, you got to give the coaching staff uh, a, a big uh, heads up on this too, or a pat on the back at least, because uh, they adjusted, right? They saw how much the Chiefs were going to blitz and send pressure at Josh, and they adjusted. They forced the Chiefs to get out of their uh, light box situation and put more defenders in there against the run, and the Bills were able to take advantage with, of course, that deep pass to uh, Gabe Davis. The, the, the game-winning touchdown pass was amazing. Uh, to see Josh signal uh, to, I guess, defenders, like, like he's going to go to his left and then immediately throw a dart in the end zone to Dawson Knox was spectacular. Best thing about Josh, I think, and the thing that maybe Bills fans are really enjoying is he's getting better. If you can <laughs> believe it, he gets better. I don't know. We're into the point now he gets better almost weekly, and that really is something to see. Yeah, he's jumping over people. He's throwing oh. it over people. He's doing a little bit of everything. I joked yesterday that $120 million isn't enough for mm -hmm. Von Miller, and they should just pay him again. Murph, they needed him in games like this, and yesterday he showed up too. Yeah, it's not often, not that, not often enough, I guess, for a big free agent, big money, uh, big ticket free agent, signs a contract and delivers what he was supposed to do. And he did it. Von Miller did it yesterday. Got the, the most snaps he's had so far in any of the Bills games so far. Now, I'm not saying they're saving him for this game, but I think they recognize that this was a game where he could make a difference and he made an enormous difference. Uh, even, even he got two sacks and even uh, kind of hurried, uh, uh, you know, the Chiefs to throw the, that uh, Taron Johnson picked off mm -hmm. that sealed the game. That was his hurry that forced it. Uh, yeah, Von Miller is, and we're just talking about Von Miller on the field. As we've heard through the first six weeks of the season, he is an amazing force in the locker room and a mentor for young players. Uh, he keeps doing that. Greg Russo kind of referred to him as his mentor. So he's great uh, in the locker room, but really great on the field yesterday at age 33, I might add. I didn't know what to expect from him this year just because he is in his 30s. He's got a lot of miles, but Joe, it, he's exceeding what I had expectations for him. That's how good he has been. Yeah, I mean, this is these are the types of games that you go out and get a Von Miller for. You wanted a closer, which mm -hmm. is something that they haven't had on the defensive line um, throughout the, the Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean tenure. And so they have that, at least through the first six games of the season. Long way to go, of yeah. course. We, we need to see how he holds up through the pace of the season, especially, like you pointed out, in a 33-year-old season. But when you look at how they use him, where they use him, I've found it really interesting now that in the two in their two closest games uh, of the last three, when they went up against the Ravens and they went up against the Chiefs here, they flipped how they used him on defense. They they in the first half of those games, almost exclusively on the right side, but when push came to shove and the Bills were at a deficit, they put him on the left side. That's his superior side. I've been saying it since they signed him. Um, he, there's just something a little bit extra about how he's able to get around the edge and how he's able to set up the right tackle. It's just, it's just a different class entirely. And both, actually all three of his sacks in those two games came from the left side. Um, he put together great pressures down the stretch on key third downs in the fourth quarter. I mean, they have kind of leaned into it and it almost makes me wonder how long until they just commit to that entirely. I know they like Greg Rousseau on that side uh, at the start of games. I want to get him going, but uh, when you have a game-breaking talent on one side of the ball, I would just lean into it. Yeah, absolutely. So this game really was about the stars. It was about Josh Allen, Von Miller, Stefan Diggs, but specifically with the offense, it doesn't just run on Josh Allen. It was also some con contributions from the running backs. Devin Singletary with a nice game. We'll talk about that. Plus, the Bills showed some guts right before halftime why this might have been the finest hour for somebody who has been in the spotlight all year. Don't go anywhere. You're watching The Point After right here on 7ABC. Josh in the gun. There's the snap. Chiefs another blitz. Josh throwing deep down the right side for Gabe Davis. Makes the catch at the five. Heads into the end zone. Touchdown Buffalo. Gabe Davis beat the single coverage. They finally beat the blitz. You know, it's not fun being back down. Uh, into your, your own end zone, you know, the one or two yard line. But um, last couple weeks, we, we've had some success. So again, just trusting our guys. And Dorsey's been doing a good job of uh, calling it, trusting it, trusting us, and, and you know, moving, uh, living with it. The Superior Drive of the Game, brought to you by Superior Auto Sales. Yeah, our drive of the game is the one that gave the Bills the lead at the end of the first half. Well, actually, it was tied. It gave them the lead for a little bit, then 
12 seconds happened. The Bills went 96 yards in seven plays in just a minute and 13 seconds. Josh Allen hit Gabe Davis from 34 yards out. The key play was an 18 yard catch though from Gabe Davis on third and 13 from the one yard line. So back here with Joe B and Murph, the Bills faced third and 13. They're all the way back at their one. Josh Allen throwing from the back of the end zone. No problem. <laughs> Murph, Ken Dorsey, what do we think of his performance yesterday? How's he done six weeks into the season? I think he's done well. I don't know if that was the toughest uh, opponent he's faced all year, right? I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs, kind of a smaller, uh, flow to the football type of defense. They're not real big. And I, what I liked about what they did offensively overall yesterday, and obviously Josh was part of it, but they adjusted, right? And they were patient. And they spent the first half trying to get the Chiefs out of that light box. The Chiefs came in ready to play pass defense. They're, they're decent at it, not real good. And the Bills said, okay, we'll take some runs. And they they did and they ran pretty effectively until the Chiefs had to commit another person into the box to stop the run and then uh, Josh Allen was was lighting them up through the air. Uh, they beat the blitz. I think that touchdown catch by Gabe Davis may have been the one that turned the game around for Buffalo. They finally beat the blitz. They finally solved what they were doing and there's a lot of reasons for that but a lot of it was uh, Ken Dorsey and his approach which was changed during the course of the game. Yeah I think Mina Kimes tweeted it yesterday from ESPN. Yep. At one point Josh Allen was 0 for 7 when he was going against the blitz and then he woke up because that's what Josh Josh Allen does, but we also want to talk about the running backs yesterday, specifically Devin Singletary Murph. He had his best game of the season yesterday. Yeah, and especially I think the first half he was outstanding, right? 10 carries average about seven and a half yards per carry in the first half. He was really good and he was important for the Bills, so the game wouldn't get away from them in the early going. They were having trouble on offense, as we pointed out in the red zone. They had the uh, weird turnover that Josh threw that uh, ill advised uh, backwards pass, but uh, Singletary kept him in it with some good running, some good cuts. I think Devin Singletary is kind of picked up where he really left off last year. He's a really good running back. And I also have to throw some credit towards the offensive line, which now six weeks in seems to have hit their stride as far as uh, run blocking. I think they're in good shape now and they, they got to continue that as the weather begins to turn. I think Singletary is the only one that they trust. I mean, Zach Moss was inactive yesterday. I still don't think they like handing it off to James Cook, at least in big games like yesterday. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. But Joe, you also saw a sign of progress, not just from Singletary, but from the guys blocking for him. Yeah, uh, kind of like what, what Murph pointed out there, they have isolated what they do best, and they have now made that a staple of their running game. Not a lot of this wide zone action uh, anymore. You see right on the screen right now, the two blockers pulling out ahead of Devin Singletary. That's pin and pull to a T. That's, that is what they do. The blockers love blocking on it. It's their, it's their way to kind of freestyle, as Deion Dawkins called it when I was talking to him after the game. They just, they just love getting out ahead and going out and, and crushing uh, players because it allows their athleticism to kind of take over. And that's, that's what they're doing to try and compensate for not being able to run between the tackles as well as they would like to. And also, a shout out to Ken Dorsey because they flipped their tendency in doing a lot more two tight end stuff. Uh, in the two games prior, they had only run two tight ends or a tight end and a fullback on 4% of their offensive snaps. Against the Chiefs, 33%. So that's what they were kind of doing to try and catch the Chiefs off guard. Joe, really quick, do they need McCaffrey or a running back or anything? Or are they good right now? It would be fun. Uh, oh, uh, it, would, it, oh. Would, it would be really fun. I, I think he would bring a, an element to this offense that they have never seen before. It would be fun, but man, they don't, <laughs> they don't need him. I'm, 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 oh, I, I, I would not go that far. <laughs> I, th I think they would love a guy like that. That's spicy. All right. One Bill <laughs> star had to take a little bit of a longer road than most to get to Kansas City. Why Jordan Poyer's road trip was different than the rest of his team. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the point after right here on 7 ABC. Mulligan of the Week, brought to you by Lynx Golf and Tab. To Josh, pitches it right side. Isaiah McKenzie can't hang on to it. Loose ball rolling around around the 12 yard line. Let's see who's got the it. It's an incomplete forward pass. Oh, they roll an incomplete. Ruling that's on the field a, is incomplete. That's a break for the Bills. After discussion, the ruling on the field has changed. It's a backward pass with recovery by Kansas City. Something about the Bills and laterals, man. Our mulligan of the week is an example of where the Bills can make some big improvements. You just saw the fumble on the lateral on the first drive of the game. That was another failed trip inside the red zone. The Bills have scored a touchdown on just 54% of their drives when they get inside the 20. Short yardage also an issue. They have converted only 55% of plays when needing just one or two yards which is weird when you consider how great the offense is. But we're going to talk about some positives on the defensive side of things. You've probably heard by now, Jordan Poyer 
couldn't fly because he's dealing with a rib injury. He was not cleared to fly. He was given the green light to play in the game, but he had to find his own way to Kansas City. So he got in a sprinter van with his wife and his daughter, and they drove 15 hours to Kansas City. And Murph, it's not that he just went that far to get there. He also played a great game. Yeah. So what a performance. What a shout out. Like, that guy deserves a lot of praise for doing that. Yeah, and well, the van ride is amazing. We can talk yeah. about that in a minute. But he played well, and he leads that defense, you know. And he's hurt. He's got, like, a, a puncture in his lung area that, uh, that he wasn't safe for him to fly. He played well. They held the Kansas City Chiefs to 20 points. I think Poyer has become a real leader and kind of a touchstone in that Buffalo defensive backfield. I know he's looking for a new contract, and I usually don't go to bat for guys looking for new contracts, but I'd give him one. I mean, I think he's become a leader, and, and especially without Micah Hyde now, it, it's almost like he's assumed even more of a leadership role. I know he's, uh, he's not advanced age. What is he, 31 years old? But I know you don't normally give guys like that a long-term contract, but they got to work something out. This past weekend, he demonstrated how much this team uh, means to him and how much he cares about his teammates. I think he deserves a new deal. I'm pretty close to that, too. I still think that they need to meet in the middle somewhere, but I've been very much on the side of 31 years old, wrong side of 30 safety wants a ton of money it's got to be a term thing so there's got to be something I wouldn't give him a long-term contract but he just means so much to the team and he means so much to defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier who Joe you said just a master class yesterday yeah he was he was getting into his bag yesterday yeah. he uh, he was trying some stuff that the Chiefs had never seen from the Bills before because they quite literally had never done it before like on three specific plays early on didn't work but they they tried uh, taking Matt Milano off the field subbing Saran Neal on and giving uh, a different look to Patrick Mahomes that way that one did not go well that was one of the plays that it was the 42 yard Juju Smith Schuster touchdown but from that point they pivoted which I thought was really impressive not sticking with that same thing after it didn't work on on a few different plays um, they pivoted and kept Milano on the field put Saran Neal out there and took a defensive tackle off and and they played a lot of dime which is something they just don't normally do to try and deal with that and that is some of the empowerment that having a guy like Von Miller provides a, a Bills team they have so much confidence in their front in, to get there even with three that they can put them out there use Matt Milano as a spy and kind of a am I going to blitz am I going to not am I going to blitz am I going to not and and that kind of messed with Patrick Mahomes a little bit so Frazier the Bills they played their highest percentage of man coverage in that game yeah. throughout the throughout this year they blitzed at 19.1 percent and conventional wisdom tells you don't blitz Patrick Mahomes he is 41 and 7 uh, in games where teams blitz 15 percent or more but the Bills tried it and they won it's amazing that you remember all those numbers, by the way. I have no idea how you do that, but okay. Can the Bills be better? That's the question we're asking. It's hard to imagine. They're 5-1, and one, but we're going to look at maybe some moves they could make or some games that they've got coming up. That's all on the other side of the break. Don't go anywhere. You're watching The Point After right here on 7ABC. Keys to the Game, brought to you by Metro Roberts Realty. Let us hand you the keys to your next home. All right, let's take a look at the standings as we head into the Bills bye week. The Bills, the number one team in the AFC East in the entire conference. They are the only 5-1 and one team in the AFC. Look at this, though. The New York Jets 4-2 and two after blowing out the Packers at Lambeau Field. The Dolphins and the Patriots both sit at 3-3. Three and three. Maybe it's the AFC beast and not the AFC least like we thought going into the year. I thought of that on the fly, by the way, guys. That was actually pretty good. Like, somebody give me some kudos here. Good. Will not. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Really great friends that I've got here. So, guys, we're getting ready for the bye week here. There's a lot of talk about what the Bills need to do. Murph, as we get into this, like, what are their keys to the rest of the season? What are your biggest takeaways at this point? Number one, get healthy and stay healthy. As healthy as they can. I don't think the injuries are over, but... Guys are coming back. They have to keep them back and stay as healthy as they can. And look, the, the toughest part of the schedule is past us now. I remember when we taped our first show in, in, uh, in August, I guess it was, and I thought if they get to this juncture at the bye and won three or maybe four, it'd be okay because the, the rest of the games, they're not easy, but um, they're not as tough as the games they played so far. I think they're in really, really good shape right now. Yeah, when you look at the AFC as a whole, think about it. The Bills have already beat the Ravens. That's the top team in the AFC North right now. They have beat the Titans. That's the top team in the AFC South. And then yesterday, they beat the Chiefs, the top team in the AFC West. So they've taken care of all of the top dogs in the other divisions in the AFC. Joe, though, we're not talking just about winning the AFC. We're talking about how does this team win a Super Bowl? Are there any moves you need to see them make at this point in the year to get over that hump? I think they should be aggressive at the trade deadline. I really do. I think this is a year that you see so infrequently 
that you have to push the chips in. I mean, they have the perfect complement between synergy and high-end talent. And you have to maximize it in a year like this. It doesn't matter what happens after this one. Go after, get a, get a star that's available that you didn't think was going to be available, push them all in, and see if you can actually bring home the first Super Bowl title in franchise history. This is the best team I have ever seen from them. It probably will be the best team in terms of synergy plus talent that, uh, that I will see from them. So it's time to go all in. Yeah, nobody remembers if you trade a second or a third round pick if you won the Super Bowl the year before. Maybe keep the first. After that, I'm with you. Go all in. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's John Murphy. That's Joe Biscalia. I'm Matt Bovee. Have a great bye week. Don't worry. It's only a week without football. We'll be back soon. Have a good one, everybody.